What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And today, I'm taking a look at The Station. Now, this is a game coming out February 20th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And there is some mention of it also coming out on PSVR, but I didn't get that information prior to this review. Regardless of which version you get, it's going to come to you at the suggested retail price of $14.99. The Station is a game not unlike what remains of Edith Finch or The Vanishing of Ethan Carter or even Tacoma before it. You play the part of a recon specialist out to find out why a space station has gone dark and why it appears that anyone who travels in space also becomes an avid reader. So here's my review for The Station. Lots of books, lots of lights, and game title onomatopoeia. Graphics start first. Overall, I'd say I like the look of the game, and while the game isn't pushing out a punishing number of polygons at any time, it's a style uh, that's sort of a mix of Star Trek and almost Deus Ex motifs cut down to their basics, even if the occasional neon highlights makes you think, damn, the number of migraine sufferers must be really high in this game world. I also sort of like the big, bold look to everything, and this actually helps as many of the smaller puzzles are based on finding things in the environment, and we all know that can be difficult when everything seems to mend together, and finding the local mechanic's monkey wrench is like a 40-foot wide Where's Waldo painting when you're colorblind. Asset work overall is pretty good for this cost level with detailed textures and various effects, giving the game a more ethereal look, especially as you play it, than it initially starts out with. While it doesn't have the somber hell just came to Frogtown kind of look of Doom or many other space station based games like say Tacoma, it's not overall half bad. When it comes to performance on the PC it's rock solid with 4K at 60 FPS with a couple drops on the i7 and the 1080. 1440p and 1080 will be in a range of anyone with any kind of modern card most likely, but that can't really be that surprising as there's really not much here going on to stress even a last generation system. Overall, I'd say I like the stylistic look. It's more art than high octane action and pushing of effects and frame rates is sort of in the back compared to the art style, which is pushed up front. Make no mistake though, the station, it doesn't really have near the elegant lines of let's say Edith Finch or the imagery of Ethan Carter, but is somewhere between Event Zero and Tacoma. Sound, music, and voice. There's no real achievement possible for the daughter of a hero. I don't wish to seem ungrateful, but it's getting cold in the shadow you cast on me, father. In contacting a violent alien race. Is this worth risking our safety, our security? As a compromise, a three-person team on board an undetectable space station is sent to research the alien world. As always, we're gonna start with music first. This has to be one of the leanest music tracks ever. From the beginning moments when the story started to the end moments when you're discovering what happened to the crew, the game really only has a small number of tracks, and while overall they do fit the mood and even elevated it once in a great while, there's a good chance throughout the two plus hours of gameplay you're going to notice its absence. The ending credits song though, gotta say, fantastic, but it really does nothing to elevate the actual feeling that while you're playing the game itself, it's like watching an action movie with no sound on. And of course, that brings us to voice, and man, this is bland. It's like everyone decided that, hey, the best bet is to really just do the voice recording subsequent to long nap times. It is crazy. You can almost hear the person playing Aiden audibly yawning into the microphone. And then there's Mila, whose back and forth temperamental exchanges literally don't feel emotional at all. And that plus the music means that this is a very lean affair. I mean, Jesus, half the game's about listening to the vocal journals to decrypt what's actually happened on the station subsequent to your arrival. It's like listening to Ben Stein read chemistry books for Christ's sakes. And that's when they're actually animated at some point. And of course, that brings us to sound. Now, there's minimalistic, and then there's just not there, and the station is barely above the former. It just doesn't really have a unique soundscape at all, and the only breaks from the monotony of a constant shh sound of the space station on autopilot is a series of explosions or smaller effects that really are only there for a moment-to-moment -moment time span and then briefly gone. There just isn't much here at all to really make you feel like you're suitably in this eerie place, which is sort of what they're going for. And rarely do you hear the sound of distressed steel or the shifting of space station sections like we would expect in a lot of games like this. This leads to an overall antiseptic air to the entire environment, which means it doesn't really do anything. Now, that being said, there's a small plus here. Many games like this will have you Peter Panning through a friggin' level just skippity doo don, and the sound of your footsteps will be this grating, crashing sound, almost always set a bit too high or a bit too obnoxious to ignore over time. It's something that actually in the station is done well with a muted boot step as you walk, and that is something that, hey, I gotta actually at least mention. 
And of course, talking about walking brings us to gameplay. Now you play as a recon specialist sent to find out why a space station that's been put into place to stealthily watch a planet that was found to have alien life on it has lost contact. Your job is to indeed walk around, investigate what happened and take that information back to Earth. Now, a good deal of the time you will be listening to audio logs from the various crew members, which does sound like, yes, right before death, they leapt to their Roxio MP3 player and smashed the record button to capture themselves in various states of terror as they shift their mortal coils. This is played off as the station recording everything that they did, but it's another moment where the station just doesn't go the extra mile, even graphically here, to represent most of what's going on. The rest of the time, you're working through a small number of mostly visual puzzles that all share the same iconic theme, and that was one of the good parts of the game because I did like the puzzles. Now, they're not hard, not much at all, in fact, but they are based well within the game's level structure and gameplay logic, meaning you didn't have that screwed up moment where somehow on a space station, you're mixing two heater hoses, a gerbil, and a pair of art scissors to make a flamethrower like many other titles out there. It is more delineated than that in the gameplay. And then it's over. That's right. Just about the time you think, man, this isn't so bad. Just a nice and big space station to run around. There's a ton of things to learn. Oh, wait, boom, done. Barely above two hours, and that's just enough time to basically walk around the rooms and then trigger the ending sequence. If you get stuck on a puzzle, I could see it lasting a little bit more, but for many people, I actually see it'll probably be a little faster. I think for me, that's the problem with the station. It looks interesting. Its setup is sort of interesting. Without ruining it, it involves overarching control, eavesdropping, and how that affects those people doing the listening. But then it goes nowhere where Tacoma interlaced various paths across a much larger area with gameplay mechanics that at the very least offered some kind of flexibility. There's nothing like that here in the game. The station shows up, then goes home, much like the protagonist himself. Throughout the entire game, the station feels like a watered down version of Tacoma in a number of ways, and somehow yet at the same time never captures any of its magic. It's like the Los Angeles Rams of walking simulators for Christ's sakes. It's there and well, that's pretty much it. And of course, that brings us to Fun Factor, and yeah, it actually really wasn't that fun. I liked one series of puzzles in the game, but the story started to get trite overall, and while obviously it's meant to push you throughout the title until the end, it really is just sort of a bland rendition of any number of movies, games, or books about a mysterious disappearance, except it's not as fun, rewarding, or enjoyable as those that came before it. Whatever the devs were trying to do with the station, it feels like they missed it almost completely. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC. And this is, of course, a never touch. Really, at this price, $14.99, it certainly isn't. But even at $4.99 or $5.99, there isn't enough there when it comes to puzzles or just anything to keep you playing. There isn't really anything that's fun here. It's a series of puzzles, and they were somewhat interesting. But when the entire location itself is so bland with so little music and so little sound to really make you feel like you're within that environment and then getting the idea that, hey, you know what? We should lay this down with a track of vocal actors who sound like they would rather be doing anything other than recording this game. And just like the game, I'm done. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out my Reddit page or Twitter. And as always, you can become a patron on my Patreon channel. That absolutely helps me make you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long and filled with sponsored bullcrap. And as always, I buy every single title that I review, even if I get a code earlier from a dev. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.